Howdy. Uh, this is Shannon Kringen in Seattle. My full name, Shannon Nicole Kringen. It is March 2nd, 2021. I'm a human being on planet Earth. Uh, I'm feeling sad, angry, scared, frustrated, muzzled. Uh, I feel not free. I feel um, like I need to censor myself in order to follow the rules on many different platforms. I'm going to see if I can actually speak my mind in an honest way without breaking any rules. I am angry about hypocrisy in the world and I'm angry about injustice. I'm angry about dishonesty. And the fact that if something is sponsored by a large corporation, there's a lot of power that large corporations have in marketing us ideas. I won't say anything specific. I think I'm allowed to talk about this issue of manipulation and marketing and PR campaigns designed to encourage people to follow certain rules out of fear of death, fear of danger. I care about my physical health and my mental health. I care about the physical and mental health of other people. I feel trapped by certain rules and ideas that I think are not in the best interest of certain people. I'm trying to not say anything specific so that I cannot be accused of something negative that I don't even want to say the, the catchphrase. Let's just say I'm not a fan of book burning, uh, of cancel culture, of virtue signaling, of guilt, shame, and fear mongering. So, but I am a fan of regenerative agriculture and regenerating the soil. I'm a very, I feel, I am a human being who I am is a human being. I want to stay a free range human being. I'm not a fan of genetically modified food. I'm not a fan of monocrops and pesticides and fertilizers. I'm not a fan of harsh cleaning chemicals. And I use non-toxic products in my house to clean. And I walk barefoot in the forest. And I like fermented foods like bacteria with, with healthy bacteria like uh, sauerkraut and raw milk and raw cheese from Switzerland and France and raw milk that I get at the health food store that they are allowed to sell with good bacteria in it for my health. I'm a fan of being barefoot in the forest. I'm a fan of feeding my cat a raw meat diet, nutritionally balanced for all life stages of a cat. But I feel really frustrated. Today, I went to a therapy support group for people who like to write in journals, because I write in a journal. And I write poetry and creative writing. And ever since I read the diary of Anne Frank, when I was 11, 12, 13, I don't know if I was 11, 12 or 13 at this point, I forgot. But I started writing in a diary because of Anne Frank and her wonderful book, The Diary of Anne Frank, The Di Diary of Anne Frank, The Diary of a Young Girl, whatever it's called. It's amazing. I went to Amsterdam. I visited the hiding place. 
but I'm very angry. I feel defensive. I feel like a witch. I'm not a witch, but I feel like I, I identify with feeling ostracized and marginalized and alienated because I disagree with some of the mainstream conformist ideas of how to be healthy. But I won't say any details because I'm basically not allowed. It's against the rules for me to say anything controversial because we all know how dangerous it is to have free thoughts. We all know how dangerous it is to question the status quo in 2021. So I feel defensive. And today I was in a support group for people who write in journals and I shared what I really thought in an honest way because it was a safe place to say controversial things. But to me, my opinions are not controversial, they're common sense. But to people who believe everything the mainstream tells them, my ideas and opinions are very controversial. So that in itself triggers my anger, which really means that I'm afraid. I'm afraid that I do not have the right to exist and think what I think and feel what I feel. Because people are being encouraged to not trust their own intuition, to not trust their own wisdom, and to not trust their own bodies. People are being encouraged to go along with what certain large corporations are telling us to do for our own good. And I won't say anything specific, but I'm very angry about being told things that I don't think are accurate. And the motivation is power and money as opposed to what they're saying it is, which is health and safety. But I won't say anything specific. I hope I'm allowed to say what I'm saying. If not, then we're really in trouble because I'm being pretty vague. I'm intentionally being very vague. So I feel frustrated. I've, I have a couple friends that agree with me on some of the things I'm saying that I can say specific things to and they won't yell at me or tell me I'm wrong or, or G-A-S-L-I-T-G-H-L-I-G-H-T. G-A-S-L-I-G-H-T. That Ingrid Bergman movie called Gaslighting. I think it's Gaslighting or Gas Lamp. Is it called Gas Lamp, Gaslighting? I don't know. It's about a woman who is abused by her husband who lies to her. And he lies, this, this woman, this movie with Ingrid Bergman, her husband lies to her to make her feel like she's going crazy. That's abuse manipulative abuse. And it doesn't just happen in personal relationships. It also happens in societies when there's a lot of money involved. And I won't say anything specific, but I feel alone and I feel so angry. Like I want to say what I really think right now in a respectful way, in a diplomatic, respectful way and say that I'm only speaking for myself. I'm only speaking for Shannon Nicole Kringen who lives in Seattle, USA. Um, I don't know. I feel like I alienate people from myself. Ever since I was a little kid, I felt excluded, left out, misunderstood, ostracized, and like I don't know where I belong because I want to be my real self. And it could be that my parents neglected me and criticized me and scrutinized me in a certain way. And it maybe set me up for having a life because like I never had a child. I had an abortion in my 20s and I still torture myself about having an abortion. I am fully pro-choice for all women. It should always be a choice if a woman has a baby or aborts her baby. Sorry if this topic is upsetting to some of you. I like to say, I like to speak as honestly as I can. I chose to have an abortion because I was terrified of having a child. I didn't want to quit my job. And the guy I got pregnant with was not doing well financially at all. And I didn't want to live with either one of my parents. It wasn't a good situation. 
my dad lived in a tiny studio apartment. There was no room for me. Literally, I would just have to crash on my dad's floor. My mom at the time lived in a house with my stepdad, with my fourth, with her fourth husband. Um, but they live in a tiny one bedroom house. And so there was literally no extra room for me. So living with either one of my parents and having a baby would have not been fun for me or the baby because it just wouldn't be healthy. And I was afraid to quit my job and give up my ability to make money. And this person wanted to, he was polyamorous, didn't believe in marriage and wanted to have babies with other women, not just me. And so really what I do, what it really, how I feel is that I regret getting pregnant in the first place. This was way back in 1995 or 96, right before I started my goddess cream TV show. So I chose to have an abortion. I mean, you could say that I shouldn't have gotten pregnant in the first place. This person would not date me unless I was willing to mate with him. And I was lonely and desperate. And I think my low self-esteem, I wanted his approval. And so I allowed that to happen. And then I changed my mind and I feel bad about it even to this day, but to beat myself up, I know is a waste of time. So for me to really love myself, and I'm currently involved with somebody who I've been with for six years and we're not compatible and yet we stay together. And so that in itself also isn't very healthy because we don't really get along. We stay together because we have a romantic attraction and because I'm trying to just feel stable. So I'm really exhausted. And I just did a training session for some work that I'm involved in, which I won't say anything specific about, but I feel kind of like going like this, like, like a military salute I never joined the military. I would be a lousy soldier in the military. The only thing I would want to do if I joined the military was be like a nurse. Like I would help people, including the enemy, because I'm not, I'm an anti-war person. So I'm really not interested in fighting an enemy and using a weapon. So I would be terrible in the military. I question authority. I could never just do what I'm told and not ask questions. So they would kick me right out of the military. So I'm not, I'm not a military person. And yet some of the protocols that we have to follow right now make me think that I've joined the military. Like just go along with it, whether you believe in it or not. And, and in fact, even if you actually think it's bad for you, you have to just do it anyway. That is really disturbing. So I feel a bit trapped and I feel a bit like I have to play a game to get along with people and go along with certain things. And yet some of the work projects that I'm involved in, I really care about. So I never had kids. I don't have any brothers or sisters. I'm, I'm, I feel angry and defensive and trapped and I'm 52 years old. So I'm going to have to figure out what to do with the rest of my life before I get to pass away. At this point, I feel like it's a relief. The idea that someday I get to pass away from natural causes is a relief to me because I'm so frustrated. I feel trapped. I'm supposed to be loving and nurturing myself. And when I say that, I feel like I have to defend myself and say, you know, people, oh, you're such a narcissist. You love yourself. No, I'm trying to love myself. I'm trying to love and nurture myself. Haven't, haven't gotten there yet. I'm trying. I care about other people as well. I have a wonderful cat that I take really good care of and I have houseplants. I just feel so defensive. And so I feel like I think that the love life that I have right now in some ways isn't very healthy and I'm embarrassed about it, but I'm afraid to change it. So I don't know what I'm going to do. I have some friends, a couple of them think similar to me. Most of the people I interact with do not agree with me on most things. And so I feel alienated and I feel alone. And the guy that led the group today says that humans are social and we need each other and isolating isn't a good idea, but I'm an introvert and I'm a loner and I might be autistic. And so I feel also defensive about that. I feel like maybe I mostly am alone because I'm wounded, because I've been picked on, bullied, ostracized, made fun of, belittled, gaslit, 
abused by some people who think that they can dominate me and get away with it and they cannot. So I have had some very traumatic experiences and I've been treated badly by some people. And my mom and my grandma had a really troubling relationship and girls picked on me, teenage girls taunted me as a teenager. That really freaked me out. And I guess I'm not really healed from that. I had an experience in 2007 with some bullying happening, which I won't go into the details of, but that re-triggered my trauma. When women abuse their power and use it against other women, it's Tori Amos, the musician talks about that. So I've had some traumatic experiences involving women, not just men. So, and I don't wanna wallow in feeling like I'm a victim of people who abuse their power and gaslight other people, but it does happen. So now I have to figure out what to do with the rest of my life. I'm 52 years old and I wanna make the best of my life. I, they say, focus on gratitude. Ask yourself what you wanna do. What do you love and what do you wanna do and try to do more of that. So I guess I'm gonna go for a walk and then go to sleep. I have shoes that I can paint. You know, I, I do artwork, I paint shoes. Um, on the wall behind me, I'll just show you before I close out this video. This is the poster artist, Shannon Kringen. And this is self-portrait photos and paintings and shoe painting and face painting that I did. So that's some of my artwork on the wall behind me and um, to remind me that I'm a creative person. I am grateful that I have food and shelter and a really nice landlord and I still work um, with art students and medical students in a limited capacity Seattle has amazing food banks that I go to every week and I share the food with other people. So there's much to be grateful for. I have my health. I'm physically and well, <laughs> I was going to say I'm mentally healthy. I'm very emotionally challenged with my health. My mental health is fragile sometimes, although I am a survivor and I'm very strong, but I suffer a lot psychologically. Um, and I don't know how to fix that. I think that my life is difficult and that when I pass away, it'll be a relief. Um, but I'm not going to prematurely do that. I'm going to live out my natural life until I pass away. So if I live to 100, I'll pass away in the year 2068. That's good enough for me. Um, I'm just, I'm really frustrated. I just wanted to document the mood that I'm in. Again, it's March 2nd, 2021. I'm happy I get to see my dad in about a month, crossing fingers. He's, he's 78 years old and he's really fit. He just got certified to be a personal fitness trainer, believe it or not. He's like Jack LaLanne and Mick Jagger. He's very fit and healthy and hope everything goes okay with his, his plan for his health. Won't go into details of what I mean, but I hope everything works out for him in that way. And so that I can see him in April of 2021. If not, I'm going to have to, if anything happens to anybody that I love, I have to just grieve as needed. Uh, recently, my friend's dog Baxter passed away from um, kidney failure. He was an older dog. He was 14 and he was a beautiful dog, a beautiful chihuahua named Baxter. And I cried about that. And that was sad. And so part of life is grief. The person that I am involved with doesn't understand me and I don't understand him. And so I feel like it's really bad for my self-esteem to, to interact with him sometimes. He's hedonistic. He likes to have sex and eat and listen to music and he plays music and he watches. He just likes to have fun and keep it shallow. And he has a certain like kashan of shallow style. I don't know if I should say that because maybe I sound like I'm belittling him. I feel a little bit dominated by him. 
not that I'm an angel myself. I, I don't think that, I think in some ways I'm a nice person, but I don't think I'm easy to be friends with. I don't think I'm easy to get to know. I think I push other people away. I think I alienate other people. So part of why I feel excluded and left out is probably because I exclude and leave out people and I allow myself, it's, part, it's mostly my own responsibility. I don't know how to fix that. I don't know how to change that. I probably need to do what Temple Grandin says, which is to find things that I love and do that. I don't really get along with people very well in terms of being really close friends with people, but I love animals and I love the work that I do as an art model and a medical model, a standardized patient with medical students. I'm good at doing that. I'm good at acting out roles of being a model and working with medical and art students. I'm good at that and I, I enjoy people in that way. I enjoy my work life. My personal life is not very happy. It never has been. It probably never will be. I think I'm just too insecure. I don't know if I'm ever gonna learn to heal. I'm really angry at myself. I'm angry at all the people who have ever been mean to me and bullied me and gaslit me and belittled me and abused me and walked all over me. I'm angry at all those people. I need to let that go and try to learn to love myself without thinking it's narcissistic to love yourself. Because if I don't love myself, I'm never going to love anybody else and nobody's ever going to love me. So I feel like I'm in prison on this planet. And I know that's a horrible thing to say because there are lots of people that are actually literally in prison and it's pretty awful, especially in the United States. We have very abusive prison system here. I admire the prison system of Norway. It's much more about teaching people how to be better people and giving them a chance and helping them learn skills. And it doesn't abuse them. It just keeps them away from the general public. And they have a very low recidivism. I don't know the word, but they have in Norway, the, the, in the United States, most people that get out of prison end up going back to prison multiple times. They don't know how to break that cycle because we don't really teach it here. We mostly abuse and punish people and it doesn't really help them be better people to abuse and punish people. But in Norway, they give prisoners a better life and then they keep them away from the general population. And then they encourage them to learn skills and learn how to be good people so that when they get out, they hopefully won't go back in and they'll actually find a career or build a family or do something positive and productive. And apparently it's pretty effective. And I admire that about Norway. So, but I don't really fit in the United States very well. And um, I've been to Norway. I liked it there. Uh, I looked into moving to another country, but it's very hard to figure out how to do it. And especially now with the rules, I got my passport renewed. I have a passport that's good for 10 years right now. Uh, but there's other things I don't want to do medically that they might force people to do to travel. And I don't want to do that. I don't, I don't even want to say the words. So never mind on that. But um, I guess I should wrap this video up. It's pretty long. Thanks for listening. If anybody listens, I don't know if anybody listens to my videos, but I feel good recording them. I'm alive. This is me proving that I'm alive. So... I have a radio show. I model online for artists. I model in person. I'm tired. I need to go for a walk and then go to sleep. I'm really, really tired um, mentally, physically. Life is a gift, but I'm really frustrated right now for multiple reasons that I can't even say. It's so horrible that I can't even say. I'm not even allowed to say what I really feel about certain things or I will get told that I'm not allowed to, to um, publish this on a public website. So that, that is really, really disturbing. Don't you think? I do. I think it's disturbing. So, um, and it's disturbing how many people think that's good. How many people think that getting rid of a lot of free speech is a good thing. That's really troubling to me. Um, history is full of examples of when taking away free speech is not really a very good idea, but um, oh well, have a good night everyone. This is Shannon Kring and Goddess Kring in Seattle. My um, 
website is shannonkringen.com. Bye for now. Do what you love if you can figure that out. I need to follow my own advice and do more of what I love and less of what I don't love unless I have to and somebody forces me. I need to try to do more of what I love and less of what I completely don't enjoy. Bye.